Do you need a simple project management solution in Google Sheets? In today's video, I'm going to take you through step by step on how to build this simple project management template in Google Sheets, including a quick timeline here that will cycle through as you go through your project. And then these conditionally formatted statuses that will automatically highlight where you are and how you're doing on your projects as well as things like double clicking to get calendar dates, assign owners, priority, budgets, actuals, add files, add notes, and a last updated field. So let's go ahead and jump right in. We're gonna start with our column headers. And so you can adjust these as needed for your own project and include or remove the ones as needed. All right, so that'll be the last one that we'll use on this sample. So I'm just gonna scroll over using this horizontal scroll bar, and then I'm gonna click and drag on these column headers, and I'm just gonna delete them just to not clutter ourselves up. As you can see, now we get rid of our horizontal scroll bar, and if you still have it, maybe your screen size is a little smaller or bigger, so you can change the zoom here or under the browser here as well. All right, so let's go ahead and just do a couple quick things. I'm just gonna get rid of some of these extra rows down here as well. And so you can click and drag like you did over here, but there's a thousand rows. So I'm just gonna click once and scroll down to the bottom and then hold down shift, click on the bottom, right click and delete rows. That just gives us just a couple of rows to deal with. If you need to add more, you can add more here. And you can add 10, for example, something like that. Or you can always insert rows like that. So, all right, so let's go ahead and just set our header formatting real quick here. And so you can pick whatever color you like here for your project. I'm just going to pick teal. And then I'm going to go ahead and update the font here. And then center those. And then I'm going to add a filter as well, just so we can filter our end results. I'm also going to wrap these so that way it automatically fills to fit what we need. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink these down a little bit. So let me just fill in a couple sample tasks here and some samples start and end dates. If I double click here, we're not having anything pop up. So let's start with some data validation. And so there's a couple ways we can do this. I can select like this, since I want them in both, or I can select the whole things using the column header there, B and C, and then hold down control and then deselect those. A couple different ways, or I can just literally click on one of these and then we'll go to drop down and then changes from drop down to is valid date. And then I can just update the range here. So I'm just going to add that colon and then C because I want it on both. Now, if I was just doing it in column B, then I just do colon B just like that. And that would fill down the rest of that column. I'm going to go ahead and do the C. And then I'm just going to go ahead and reject input. I don't want anything but dates in here. So click done. And now if I double click, there are those dates. So now I can just put in a couple quick dates here. Put in like that. Maybe something a little. Uh, let me rewind this real quick. 12. Go another week out and another week out. Something like that. Just cycle through a couple sequential weeks. And then we'll put together this formula here in a minute. Let's just go ahead and get these drop downs here. And so I'm going to go ahead and make our drop downs tab. And then we can do agent or owner, priority, and status. And then just like I did before, I'm going to select the rest of these columns. And then right click, delete columns. And then we can again do this if we like as well. Do some quick formatting. And then we can just add some names here if we like. 
whatever ones we want. Add our priorities. And you can put medium if you don't want the short, and you can do high or high, whatever you need there. And if you have low, mid, etc., you can do that as well. And then under status, we're just going to add some standard ones here. And so you can adjust these, obviously, as needed for your own projects. And then one thing to note with these as well, and if you have a bunch of owners or potential owners or a bunch of statuses, one thing that may be helpful is just to select those. And then under here, view more cell actions, we can sort this range alphabetically. And so for some people, that makes it a little easier for them as you start typing and then it just shows up in alphabetical order. Otherwise, you can put them in the order that you would like. For example, in this case, where maybe it's a little more sequential. So you can pick either way. And the same thing with owner or priority as well. So now we have those. Let's go ahead and add those drop downs. I'm just going to select our owner column here. Go to drop down and then change this to drop down from range. And then I'm going to click on this one over here, select data range, click in here, and then go over here to drop downs and select that range there. And I can go all the way down by dragging, or I can just come up here and just remove that 20 and just do A2 through 20 on this drop downs tab. Click OK. And then it's up to you. Some people like chips. Some people don't. If you don't want chips, you can do an arrow here and then click done on priority. We can do the same thing. So here I'm going to show you a different method. I'm going to click on this F part here and then hit control, hold down control and click on this. And that's another way to select a column. So if there's a lot more rows, that's a faster way to select a column. Or as you saw before, you can just select one and then add that as well. So if our data validation rules is still over here, we can actually just click here as well and then change this to drop down from a range. And do our priority. Again, I'm just going to do it like that. Change this to an arrow. And then do the same thing with status. There we go. So now we have owner priority and status, and then we can enter budget and actual. And then the way the files works here is you can either insert a link like this if you have a link to a project, or if you already uploaded it, you can do at and start typing that file name and pull it in. Obviously, there's also places and stuff like that. Another thing you could do as well is right click, go to smart chips and file. And it'll give you a quick prompt on different files that you could attach there. And then obviously your project notes can go here. And this last updated, if you want that, you could turn this into a date field as well. Also check out the description. And I have a link to a script that you could have this fill automatically whenever they update something in that row. So let's go ahead and change this to valid date. Object input, and there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and do our timeline real quick, and then we'll add our status drop down conditional formatting. So I'm just going to go ahead and select these real quick. And then let's do our formula here. All right, so what we're going to do is a formula, and I'm going to drag it down so it's filled automatically when we add future tasks. And so what I'm going to start with is a if formula or if function. And then I'm going to say if both B and C are blank. And I'm going to do that using and. And so that means both of these are true. B2 equals to blank. C equals to blank. And then I'm going to do a comma. And then you, we could either do this because I don't want anything to show up. Or I can just leave it blank and do two commas. So either way, some people like just the double quotes there just to help them see visually the placeholder. So let's go ahead and do that for now. And then next, what we're going to do is if this hasn't started yet, the timeline hasn't started yet. And so we could say if B2 is greater than today, then again, do nothing. 
And then finally, if C2 is less than today, and then we can turn what we want to do here. So we could make this just show up as all green if the due date is passed, or we could leave it blank again. And so it's up to you what you want to do there. I'm just going to show you real quick how to do a quick spark line if you want to show a completed. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a little manual data. And so instead of normally we'd reference basically two pieces of of data so we for each part of the bar chart so it's the the value of the first part of the bar and the value of the second part of the bar so if we want the whole thing we can do one zero and so what that's going to do is basically 100 percent and then we can do a little setting for our spark line and we're just going to do two things here so we're going to do chart type and bar and then semicolon and we're just going to set our first color to green and then close out our spark line and we'll go to our next criteria all right so we've eliminated if b and c are both blank then we're going to do nothing if b2 start date is greater than today going to do nothing and then if c2 is less than today we're just going to assume our spark line is going to show fully completed otherwise our final option is a spark line And this time we're going to do our little manual set again. And normally a spark line, you select data, but in this case we're using dates. And so we want to generate the numbers we're going to use. And so what we're doing is two pieces here. So our left side of our spark line and the right side of our spark line. So the left side of our spark line is how far along are we? And so we want to look at the correlation of start date to today. So we're going to do that using today minus V2. And then for our second one, we're going to do C2 minus today. That's how much time is left. And then let's go ahead and do our chart type options again here. And chart type. And we're going to do bar again. Semicolon. And so if you notice here in the chart type um, for the spark line, we do a setting, comma, and the value. And then semicolon, and then we do our next setting. And so now I'm going to do color one. This is going to be color of the first bar. And let's go ahead and do green. And then color two of the second bar or what's remaining. Let's just pick a RGB and so you can pick whatever you like here. I'm just going to pick a gray here. Like this. Go ahead and drag this down. You can see it's not showing up anything. And so let's go ahead and just run through some of our sample scenarios. So let's say if this is greater than today, so still nothing. Okay. Let's look at if this is less than today, it just shows up as all green. There we go. So that is our timeline. And so this allows you to then quickly and visually see where you are on this. So let's say we put something out there ways you can see it just barely a crack of green on there all right so finally let's go ahead and do our conditional formatting for our status and then we'll wrap this video up so on this we want to format an, our entire row and so we can do that a couple different ways we can just select anywhere in here we can select the whole data set whatever is fine so i'm just going to sh quickly show you a couple different ways to approach this so I'm just going to select the whole data. So I'm going to just click on two, drag down to the bottom, and then format, conditional formatting. And now you can see that apply to your range is selected all of our data. Another way you can do this, let's undo that. You can just click anywhere in here, it doesn't really matter. Go to conditional formatting, and you can see here C8, and I can just change this manually to A2 to L. I think that's the last column. Yep, there we go. And so that makes it very quick and easy as well. Now what we're going to do is Scroll down to custom formula. And then we're going to do equals dollar sign G two equals two. And then I'm going to put in some stuff here like to be started. And then what this is going to do is I'm adding that dollar sign to the G because I want Google to only look in column G for this text. And then I have two because that's the starting row. 
And so I just want that to match whatever I'm doing here. And so I could start with one, but then it would be off. You can see something's goofy there. If I change this to one, then it's back to fine. So you just want to make sure that these are the same row. Otherwise, I'll have some unexpected behavior. So to be started, let's go ahead and make that orange. And then we'll go ahead and click done on this one. And then we're just going to duplicate this out. So hang on and we'll run through this. Add another rule and off we go. All right, so we got all of our conditional formatting in place. And so now if we change these, it'll go to whatever that formatting would be. And that allows you to quickly and easily see where you're at visually speaking. So let's go ahead and just change some of these. Let's say on track, on track, at risk, and then get rid of the rest of these. One thing you can do as well is sort by color. And pull whichever one you want to the top. So you can do white and obviously that it's kind of weird, but that's just a way that you can do that as well. So you can do that one, leaves the yellow at the bottom and maybe something like that. You can also do this filter and show it like this. You can get rid of on track and just so at risk. And so the way this works is let's go ahead and select some more here. is whatever is selected checked here basically is what shows up so if you want to quickly pick one hit clear here and then we could check off track and at risk and just see those and then to reset that i can go back here and select all seven click okay and then everything's showing back up again so that's a quick way to be able to filter and see specific tasks that you want to take a look at you can also do the same thing with priority as well and so forth and then finally, let's go ahead and just drag down this header column. So that way as you start to scroll down, that will remain in place for you. All right, so that is it for today's video. Make sure to like it and subscribe if this video was helpful for you. And as always, have a great day.